So, a guide to meditation. The, a regular meditation practice has been shown to reduce levels of stress and anxiety, improve sleep and concentration, promote kindness and self-awareness, um, lower blood pressure and reduce cognitive decline. Here's everything. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but uh, still, it says here everything you need to know about sex. Oh no, sorry, everything you need to know about finding a moment of calm. And possibly meditation is everything you need to know about sex too, but that's a more subtle point. What exactly is meditation and how do you do it? Melanie Hansel, yoga and meditation teacher, explains all. I'm not Melanie Hansel. Quite possibly she is. It's not about clearing the mind. Okay, that's the first point. And practice makes perfect. And then there's the four stages, no five stages. That's it. Okay, it's not about clearing the mind. The two most common things that put people off meditation are the belief that you have to sit and clear the mind for hours at a time and that you have failed if you get lost in thought. We're lost in thought, caught in a trap. I can't turn my nine to five. We're lost in music. That's the worst karaoke session you'll ever get on channel YouTube Toothpaste 007 and also channel Refuge Tree Woods. But anyhow, I digress. But it is important to understand that we can't completely empty the mind of thoughts. Our brains are wired to think. Mindfulness meditation is the practice of just noticing those thoughts as they come along. And where you put the stress. In unpredictable places. You do think funny thoughts, don't you, Paul? We start with the intention of focusing on the breath. When we notice that the mind has wandered off, we gently invite the awareness back to the breath. Over time, we become aware of the kind of thoughts that come up for us without getting lost in them or judging them as good thought, bad thought. Yeah, I just say thinking and let it pass like a cloud in the sky. I don't go up into the cloud and get caught up in it. Ah, oh, thinking, that's what I'm doing. Let it pass. Practice makes perfect. If you're new to meditation, it can feel strange to sit and observe the mind. It might be the first time you've ever done this. In fact, I was really shocked. Um, it's a meme or whatever it might be called that uh, it was revealed in that I can't remember what percentage it is but really quite a high percentage of people aren't conscious of an inner life they don't have this sense of awareness of themselves choosing to do this or that they just do what they do without that kind of oh I wish I could remember the wording from the uh, Facebook story that went round saying are you aware that you're either one of these types who has this inner dialogue or one of these types that doesn't and you might not be aware how many other people operate from the opposite, opposite mode. Oh, that was uh, as clear as it could be. Crystal. My name's not Crystal. Crystal Gale. I see, I'm going to throw in references that just show how 70s I am. I'm not going to appeal to the youth of the day. Am I trying to appeal to the youth of the day? I'm trying to give out information about meditation. Just get on with it, Paul. Mm. A simple way of thinking about meditation is that it's an exercise to train the mind. A bit like how fitness exercises train the body. I've uh, left my um, dumbbells to the neighbour. That's Call that a video, Will, if you will. 
the more we do, the easier it will become. Often the mind begins to wander after only one breath. That's a song. Every breath you take, every... Get on with it, Paul. Anyhow, often the mind begins to wander after only one breath. Well, that's okay. In time, the moments of stillness and calm between the thoughts may become longer, helping you to feel more relaxed, focused and less reactive. Maybe it's easier if I just held this up to the camera rather than uh, read it in my way. Sometimes reading is so much a better way of learning than watching videos, but watching videos is so much uh, easier, you think, until I present the videos and then you realise bloody hell if I just had that two pages it wouldn't have taken me six minutes to absorb that instead I had to put up with the loon and he's not even from Lancashire though he lived there for five years L-U-N-E guided meditation we're going through five stages so number one is that how you do one or is that how you do one you don't start with the, the pinky as they call it in America one Start by finding a comfortable seat. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole thing on meditation posture, but I'm a bit too slumped down. You need to be have your bottom lift, lifted up um, so some of your weight goes onto your knees. However, your knees are arranged, crossed or kneeling. That's, a, well, that's what I'll say about posture to start off with. So I'm not in the right posture. Uh, just put a, a, a pillow under my bum, but I'm resting back against a wall. At least... Uh, my spine is somewhere approaching straight. Um, it's important to have that sense of lift in the spine and I do not believe in the efficacy of meditation lying down. The body needs to be aligned. Um, I do, there is a kind of meditation that works lying down. Dharma Ocean is the website for that. Um, but other than that, don't try and do a simple breathing exercise through um, lying down meditation. So if we've got the point one, what is it? Yep, start by finding a comfortable seat. Somewhere you can sit up tall, either cross-legged on the floor or in a chair. Close your eyes or soften the gaze so you are not forcing, focusing on anything in particular. Place your hands with the palms down on the top of your thighs. Okay, we're ready to go to number two. Take a moment to notice the sensation of sitting. Become aware of the ground or chair beneath you and the parts of your body in contact with it. Now bring your focus to your hands, noticing the weight of your hands on the thighs and the sensation of the fabric of your clothes on your skin. Now, if you want a version of this to take away, then make a screenshot. And there's points one and two. And you don't have to revisit this lesson and hear me twittering it on, twittering on about it. It's just important to get these five points. Number three, now begin to notice how your breath feels in your body as you inhale and exhale. Make no effort to change the breath. Simply let your natural breath flow in and out. Perhaps you feel the belly or the chest rising as you inhale and then falling as you exhale. Or you notice the cool sensation of the breath as it enters the nose and goes down the throat and the sensation of the warmed breath leaving the body as you breathe out. And may you never notice the sensation of your lungs filled with fluid. Aim to focus, but if you do, oh, lungs filled with fluid. Very little breath. Such is COVID-19. Such is my destiny. Maybe I'll be here again. Interesting. Four, aim to stay focused on these sensations of the breath. But when you notice the mind wandering, acknowledge the thought. Then come back to the breath again. And five, when you're ready to end your practice, notice the sensation of the ground beneath you and slowly open your eye. 
How long shall I meditate for? Set small goals. Well, I hope that was 10 minutes usefully, usefully spent um, presuming that you are in self-isolation and um, well, I'm honoured that you spent 10 and a half minutes now of self-isolation with me. May you be well. May you be strong if you can't be well. By the power of all the Buddhas, may all happiness be yours. By the power of all Buddhas, may all gods protect you. By the power of all the Buddhas, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. What got me through the general election as a, as a candidate, I, it only worked for me once I'd got my mandala correct. My mission to stand for generosity, relationships of care, and I don't know best, we know better. Then there are three circles, that's the middle, there are three circles, classical Venn diagram crossing each. Um, overlapping each other. One is the field of unsatisfactoriness or Dukkha, D-U-K-K-H-A is the very rich Sanskrit term. I think there's a slight variation on that for the Pali terminology. Anyhow, the field of unsatisfactoriness is the first field which overlaps with the field of insubstantiality, which overlaps with the field of impermanence and when you're living in the middle of that you're living close to reality. It was a club of three lakshmas and in the middle of the night if I wake up I'm encouraged by Vidyakaya, excellent film he's made f uh, with me years ago on um, the body, the body, the body, the body. I put it as insomnia, there's a new playlist on this channel um, called insomnia and it starts with the Vajrasattva chant, um, Om Vajrasattva Manu Palaya Vajra Satford Feno Petishta Zredho Me Bava Sutosho Me Bava Suposho Me Bava Anaracto Me Bava Sava Siddhi Me Precha Sava Kama Sucha Me Chitam Shreya Guru Ong Ha 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 Ho Bhagava Sava Katagata Vajra Me Muncha Vajri Vava Mahasamaya Sattva Ahong Pat The Call of the Forest by Sangarakshita. I'll come back to that. Maybe in another film. You spent thirteen and a half minutes with me if you've not skipped. Outside of those three Lakshanas that are the things to reflect on and that Vidyakaya encouraged me is a good use of my time at night if I wake up and perhaps have worries or something running around my head, just come back to unsatisfactoriness, insubstantiality, and impermanence and reflections on those. So circling these three circles it says, lens, i.e. my way of looking at the world, being conditioned co-production and faith in realities, qualities, potentialities, etc. And I think that there is a universe of forces acting upon us way beyond reason. The working hypothesis is of conditioned co-production and faith in realities, qualities, potentialities. And exact quote from Vidyakaya, an open heart is a concentrated mind. That's basically the meaning of chitta. May the Bodhicitta be with you.